Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, and today I am here to guide you through one of the most debated and heatedly discussed topics in the ancient history, and that is ancient Egyptian statues and defaced noses or missing noses. Many of us today who love to study ancient Egypt have all noticed one thing, and that is many Egyptian statues from a variety of dynasties are missing their noses. And it is not a architectural design. No, these noses have been busted off. And so we ask ourselves, why? Why are so many Egyptian statues missing their noses? And there are a variety of conspiracy theories that surround this. One of the most prevalent is that it involves European colonialism and an attempt to whitewash North Africa and ancient Egypt. But don't get mad at me yet, because what I'm about to discuss will actually, in many cases, set the record straight. And that is the topics of natural wear of statues over time and ancient Egyptian iconoclasm. The theory that Europeans removed the noses of ancient Egyptian statues to hide their obvious African features is a bit flawed, and I'll explain why. Though European colonialism did many terrible things, stole many things from foreign lands not their own, I can honestly say, with the backing of academia, that defacing ancient Egyptian noses as a form to whitewash North Africa and ancient Egypt isn't actually one of those atrocities. Now, I think it's important to first note, starting out, that the nose of these statues is highly vulnerable and will wear over time. And so I do believe that some of these statues did suffer from natural wear because it is exposed, because it does stick out of the statue and is subject to a variety of elements. However, what I believe the main contributing factor to be in light of academic work on the subject is ancient Egyptian iconoclasm itself, and their religious beliefs, along with political rivalry, almost a form of violent historiography. So I talked briefly about how weather and natural elements can cause exposed features like a nose of a statue to wear over time, but let's get down to the nitty-gritty, and that is how the ancient Egyptians viewed the supernatural and certain dynasties that came before them. As it turns out, the ancient Egyptians believed that statues had a life force. And what I mean by that is not that statues could get up and walk around, you know, as a movable living object itself, but that it actually possessed the life force of the person it represented, as in that person could really live on and exist within this statue, and that by removing the nose, they could actually sever that being's connection to their world. As we know, the ancient Egyptians, like many civilizations, peoples, and cultures of their time, were incredibly religious with an intense belief in the supernatural. There were a variety of ceremonies that would be done on statues that were to give it a life itself, if that makes sense, such as anointing it with sacred oils. And so, though the ancient Egyptians knew that the statue couldn't get up and walk and that it wasn't literally breathing in air, they still viewed that nose as the source of life for the statue itself, because that is how they, as people, inhale air. It keeps us alive. This belief 
was widespread enough that we believe now that many of the ancients were willing to actually take their beliefs a step further if the need arose. For example, if you're an ancient Egyptian and you are looting a sacred gravesite of, let's say, one of the pharaohs or a family member of the Egyptian royal family, and that statue is present there, you may actually remove the nose because you believe that by removing the nose, it kills the life force of that statue, and you may avoid the wrath of either that person or the family or the gods by doing so. In a sense, by removing the nose, you are killing the statue's life force itself. However, many of the antagonists who would deface these statues often would not stop there, but they would also smash the arms, the torso, remove the head completely from the body, along with, in many cases, destroying much of the statue in general. And this wasn't just done for looting or criminal purposes, or done purely for religious purposes symbolism either, but it was also done, in many cases like in our own world today, for political reasons, whether it be the mass hatred of a previous ruler or the current dynasty showing their distaste for a previous one. There are, of course, other instances as well, such as human error, in which a statue could easily just be knocked over. Whether it was being moved or people were reorganizing an area, it does happen. Humans do make mistakes. An easy way to spot the purposeful and violent removal of ancient Egyptian noses on statues, as expert Oppenheim pointed out in an article he did with Laura Gegel for Live Science, is to look for marks around the nose itself. And so, another important thing to note is that iconoclasm itself wasn't just practiced by the ancient Egyptians, but also by the participants of a new religion, and that was the members of early Christianity. And so I personally don't believe it was just pagan ancient Egyptians and pharaohs who were defacing ancient Egyptian statues, but also, possibly, members of early Christianity in Egypt. Ancient Christians themselves have a history of destroying quite a few things throughout antiquity relating to pagan culture, from temples to the statues of gods and goddesses, and of course, pagan rulers, and burning a variety of documents relating to those pagan entities and traditions. And so, I want to leave you with this. In light of these new researches, and I will link a variety of them below, it's one thing I think is important to keep in mind, and that is racial stereotypes. Many people who spread the theory or conspiracy theory that Europeans defaced these monuments on purpose to hide African features are actually playing into racial stereotypes. And if it's one thing I've learned working with experts on race and ethnicity in the ancient world, it's not that simple. Look at your world today. It's not as simple as black and white as anthropologists in an outdated world viewed human races, such as Caucasoid and Mongoloid, and another word which I'm not actually going to say to avoid a possible issue with YouTube, but I'm sure many people will know what word I'm referring to. And it's the, why I believe that it's important to debunk certain myths, because though well-intentioned, and in many cases, it's natural to believe that that could have happened. In this situation, it's not one of them. And I think it's important to kick aside 
racial stereotypes, especially involving facial features. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a like, a share, and please, by all means, subscribe. And also, check out the links below in the video description to take you to a variety of articles on this subject, our store on Teespring, where you can get a variety of awesome shirts, hoodies, and mugs relating to the ancient history that we all love. You can also find us on Patreon, but more importantly, feel free to check us out on Facebook, The Study of Antiquity in the Middle Ages, where we have a page, but also a group where you can join and fellowship with fellow history lovers. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much, and have a wonderful night.